All right. Take your Bible and turn over to Colossians. <clears throat> While you're turning there, we'll go to Colossians chapter 4. I want to thank you, uh, church, for allowing uh, your pastor to come out and come to churches like mine. Uh, preach to my people. I appreciate that. We need it. Uh, we need to hear from men like him. And uh, I, yeah, I feed my sheep. Don't get me wrong. But uh, you know what? Uh, everybody likes a steak now and then. Amen. <laughs> and uh, I, I appreciate y'all doing that. I want to thank that. Uh, I want to thank uh, Brother Tim Lambert. I don't know if he's still here or not. Brother, you're my hero. Appreciate you. I look up to you. Love you. Brother Tommy Reddish, I don't know if you're here. I appreciate Brother Tommy. If Brother Tommy hadn't invited me to church, I'd have never got saved. Appreciate you, brother. I love you. Being faithful. Amen. All right, here in uh, Colossians chapter 4, I I just want to take a minute or two. Uh, I promise you I won't be long. Uh, That's one of the greatest lies a preacher ever says. Man, I'll be brief. You know, the three greatest lies there are, checks in the mail. I'm from the government, I'm here to help. And a preacher standing there saying, I'll be brief. Amen. But here in Colossians chapter 4, notice with me in verse 12, this uh, Epaphras. I, w- I, wanna know, I want you to just notice Epaphras here for a minute. Epaphras isn't a Moses. He's not a David. Uh, he's not a Paul. He's just Epaphras. He's just some guy. You know what Epaphras does though? Epaphras has some zeal. Listen, friend, I want to tell you this morning very quickly that uh, you need to have some zeal. Yeah, maybe you ain't got but five people. Maybe you're just preaching to your family. Amen? But you ought to have some zeal about it. Amen? And listen, you serve a great God. Listen, you serve a Savior that died for you. Amen? You serve someone that is more than we'll ever be. Yeah, you're not going to be a Dr. Peacock. You're not going to be a Brother Knowles. You're not going to be some of these guys. But that's okay. You're going to be an Epaphras. Listen, I want you to look at Epaphras real quick. This man will be the closest you're going to get to you. I want you to pay attention just for a second. Notice with me real quickly, Epaphras, uh, what? Who is one of you? In other words, he's, he's just like you. I guarantee you Epaphras worked the job. Epaphras was a bivocational guy. He, uh, he, only, uh, he only had time, you know. Uh, uh, he understood having all the, the books piled up on the kitchen table and the, I, uh, the wife giving you the stink eye about she's trying to get supper on the table and you got to slide your books out of the way, amen? And, and why our bathroom ain't finished because you've been remodeling it for a year and she's still looking at you like, I'd like to have my bathroom back, honey, I love you. Now I want to tell you, she's my angel, amen? Because she's always up in the air harping about something. <laughs> I love her. I love her. I love you, baby. You're driving home today. Listen, he, he's one of you. He's a servant of Christ. He's saluting you. He's laboring fervently. He's the guy that's going out on Saturdays and putting the door knockers up and the hangers. and He's doing all he can do. Amen. Amen. But listen, notice where his heart is. Where he's fervently wanting to be. On, notice these Laodiceans down there. He's just like you. He's in Laodicea. That's where his heart's called. Listen, your heart, friend, is called to Laodicea. It's cold out there. They'll slam the door in your face. They'll take the track and wad it up and throw it down. And and, uh, you know what? It doesn't slow him down. It shouldn't slow you down. Just because you're not a Moses. Just because you're not a David. You can be an Epaphras. Epaphras is all right. Nothing wrong with being a pastor. Very quickly now, one or two more. I want you to notice somebody here who is also involved in this. Real quickly, notice who else shows up in this verse. Demas is there. You know what? Epaphras is having to work with people that's going to quit. 
He's going to get the phone call. Did you hear about Brother Demas? He quit. You know what Epaphras does? I'll pray for him. But I got a stack full of tracks and I got souls I need to go talk to. Listen, I listen. He didn't let him slow him down. Because they're falling by the wayside, friend. I'll tell you another thing. Notice what there's also there. Notice Luke's there. Luke's there, man. There's some sick Christians. They need a doctor. They need somebody to minister to them. See, it's the same. This old boy's about as close as we're going to get. He's not a David. He's not a Moses. He's not a Joshua. Oh man, listen, I, I understand the zeal and the desire to be a Moses. The problem is, like the brother said, you don't know what's going on back here in that office. The things that that brother has to put up with. Things he has to deal with. To tell you the truth, I'd probably take a pass. Amen. All right, last and notice, I want you to notice the last thing, and I'm going to close. I told you it's going to be brief. One thing you can say about me, I'm going to be honest. Amen. Amen. I want you to notice this guy down here in verse 17. Archippus. Notice the warning. Listen, brother. Notice with me. And say to Archippus. So I'm saying to you, Archippus, you're out there. There's an Archippus sitting out here. What's he saying? He's saying, listen, I want to tell you something. Take heed to the ministry which thou hast received. Listen, friend. Yeah, you don't have but five little sheep. But you received it from God. Amen. And those are God's sheep. Amen. And don't you ever let me hear you say anything bad about God's sheep. You understand me? They're five sheep. They were given to you. You take care of them like they're a flock of a thousand. Don't do that. Because you shame yourself and you shame your Savior. We serve a great God. I want to tell you our kippers. He said, take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. Listen, brethren. We need to fulfill what we've come. My old preacher told me, he said, boy, you came to get, you didn't come to quit. Listen, I came to get, I didn't come to quit. I'm not going to stop until the trumpet sounds or my heart stops beating and they put me in the ground. Amen. And you ought to do the same. Amen. Come on, brother. Who's next? <laughs>